today on the Self Smarter Podcast. If we say we're employee forward, well, how does one know that? Right. Uh, outside of pay, right? And I think a lot of companies are like, well, I pay well, and that's kind of where it stops. Hi, we're Danelle and Megan, the hosts of this conversation-centric podcast for leaders seeking to be better every day. Whether you choose to be a leader in the workplace, at home, or in your community, we believe the most effective leaders are equipped to not only be self-starters, but self-smarter. Hello, and welcome to Self Smarter. I'm Megan, and this is my friend and co-host, Danelle. Hello, everyone. Hello. How are you today? I'm all right. You? I'm doing all right. We're hanging in there. We are hanging in there. We're hanging in there. (laughs) Summer's here. It's going to get hot. It's already really hot. It's hot here. Here, I can't even breathe. I know. I walk outside, and it's like a hairdryer slash... (laughs) Some tsunami <laughs> hits my face. It's disgusting. Yeah, it is. And Does it get hot in New York like that? Well, yeah. I mean, New York gets warm, but it it's a, it. Yeah, I would say New York is extremely humid, and okay. I think that I'm just starting to get a taste of it. But the thing is, is different than here. It cools down at night, and I live on the Hudson, so I get the water breeze. water breeze. Yeah, <laughs> so thankfully, okay. but yeah, I can get. I mean, August is pretty pretty rough in New York when it comes to the temperature. So, well, I hope that breeze from the Hudson ends up being a good thing because I just want to tell a quick anecdote. (laughs) Okay. This one time we were in New York (laughs) with one of our friends who lives in Virginia Uh and she got out of an Uber in front of your apartment, your new apartment. Yes. And it's y'all it's on 11th Ave in New York. So like she said, it's right next to the Hudson river. Well, a gust of (laughs) Arctic wind (laughs) river wind yes, came through and our friend is kind of, she's light. Yeah. And she went flying down the street. <laughs> it she, picked her up. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. She got out of the Uber and I don't think she was expecting the gust, but I mean, I was laughing and scared at the, the same, same time. time yeah. It's going to float away. It was funny. So I hope that that Arctic breeze gets you in August. Yeah, me too. That would be nice. I don't know that it was Arctic, but river breeze for sure. River breeze. <laughs> I don't know, but it was whatever it was. It came with a fury. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. It can be, it can be pretty, uh pretty intense yeah. on that side and it's crazy because you can just go two two abs in and you don't feel any wind nothing it changes totally yeah so it's you're it's, in that extra special sweet spot <laughs> the view is fantastic though it is it's beautiful <laughs> it's a beautiful place speaking of new york yes someone we know is going to be off broadway next week performing yes yes so lots of fun summer plans i'm excited about the summer in new york mackie is in an off-broadway show that's a competition between they they won a competition with this play and a friend of hers wrote it that she went to NYU with and Mackie stars in it and then they won a competition and now it's down to four different plays and then whoever wins of this whoever wins this competition gets a full run on off Broadway. That's amazing. So fingers crossed. I know there's a lot of, uh, of our listeners out there that support Mackie Payton and, and her endeavors. So very excited about that. And the 4th of July, I mean, with the fireworks over the Hudson, I think it's going to be spectacular. So I'm looking, I'm looking forward to that. Good. So, well, we've yeah. been waiting for this Mackie moment. Yes. For a minute. For a long time. I yeah. mean, literally 11 years. I think she was 12, at least the first time I saw her on stage. Yes. So, yeah, no, I'm very excited about, excited for her and her colleagues and definitely Sweet Maddie who wrote the, wrote the plays and, and uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's exciting time. So very proud. It is. Yep. All right. Well, it sounds like a fun summer in New York and I'm going to be with you part of the time. (laughs) And I'm grateful for that. So, (laughs) all right, we're going to jump into the big stay right after this quick advertisement. Did you know that 53% of all website traffic comes from organic search, but nearly 91% of pages get no organic search traffic from Google? You can be part of the 10% of websites that do succeed at being found organically through search engine optimization or SEO. Right now, we're offering free SEO assessments that will determine how well your current website is optimized and tell you what you need to address if you'd like to gain a higher Google search ranking. You'll learn your overall SEO score, the high priority, medium priority, and low priority problems holding you back. And you'll gain insights into how your competitors are ranking in comparison. Ooh la la. Businesses that invest in SEO see increased website traffic that results in more lead generation and ultimately, guys, sales. 
If this sounds like something you'd like to see for your website, reach out to us here at the DMA Solutions team at info at dma-solutions.com and request your free SEO assessment today. Okay, so before that quick advertisement, Danelle, I, I mentioned the big stay. Today, we're going to be talking about what that is. Uh -huh. It's time as business leaders and businesses to start to transition our minds from the great resignation to the big stay. Mm -hmm. And so why we chose this topic is important because since the pandemic, we've all been living in an employment market dubbed the great resignation, mm -hmm. right? According to the experts as of May, so this is all very recent data and recent uh -huh. signals going in this direction, we're entering into a time known as the quote unquote big stay. So in this episode, we'll elevate the market dynamics at play and what we're learning from the experts about our employees and there's decisions to stay with you. Okay. So first things first, and I'll, let's define what the big stay is. So new data from ADP's Research Institute found that although there were 9.6 million job vacancies in March of 2023, job openings overall have gone down 20% from the 12 million in 2022. Mm. That's a significant drop. Mm -hmm. And the first three months of 2023, the number of people who quit their jobs only decreased 5%. Ah. So this is telling us that people are deciding to stay. So I think we have to look at, well, how did this happen? And more companies, I believe, have recognized the need to step up the challenge, step up to the challenge and redesign their strategies for fostering a thriving and engaged workforce. Yes. So, uh, you know, again, I think we're taking more accountability for mm -hmm. the environments, you know, our business environments and what's happening and, and, and paying more attention to things. I think that's one of the, one of the many lessons we've learned from the pandemic and then, you know, what followed suit with the great resignation. Also, I think that organizations have embraced the notion of work remote and hybrid models. I think that has a lot to do with employee satisfaction. So that was one of the biggest, one of the biggest shifts that we saw as the, the desire for work remote, mm -hmm. you know, and we've talked about it quite a bit on, on our podcast is making that decision. You know, our mm -hmm. company is definitely, we have a hybrid model. So we have close to almost 40% work remote days at our company. And so including each and every week, every Monday. So we, we saw the benefit in that. And then through our anonymous polling, which we've talked a lot about, it's one of the top benefit, top things that people value in our organization is the work remote model. So what we've learned is that the last three years have been a time for us to nurture our employees' potential by creating a workplace that fosters safety, healthy communications about needs, and collaboration. For us, we've seen a significant drop in turnover, so we're doing something right. Mm -hmm. You know, we've seen this drop in turnover when we started to value our culture and our behaviors as a team, as a company, as much as we valued performance metrics. Mm -hmm. And when we started to do that, we, I mean, we saw a significant, because we were really battling attrition there for a while, mm -hmm. but we saw a significant drop in attrition. And now we're proud, like you see anniversaries, mm -hmm. just continue work anniversaries, 10 year anniversaries continue to climb for the team members here, which is, I mean, it feels good mm -hmm. as, you know, an employer to know that this is an environment that people want to be in. Absolutely. And that they see themselves growing, obviously from a professional standpoint, but also a personal standpoint. And I believe that that's the, that's the fuel that I think companies need to find Yes, and, you know, f for themselves. It's like, okay, what can we do that helps foster the individuals that work here? Right. And in, in every sense of the word, right. And that, that doesn't happen overnight. And it takes a lot of intentional yes <laughs> well, a lot of intentionality yes. because it's again it's 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 not a simple it's not a simple task to be able to to make that happen it's definitely not an overnight thing right yeah and you know over the last couple of years with the great resignation i mean that i don't know how you felt about it but for me every time i heard that it was kind of like wah wah you know yeah. like really like this is where we are now, you know? Mm -hmm. And so as a, you know, we have one time in our lives to be a leader and this is the time, it's the time when everyone's quitting their jobs. Mm -hmm. So now with this turn of events, with the big stay, I like the positivity. Mm -hmm. I like 
the futuristic approach to thinking, okay, we've gotten past, we've gotten beyond that great resignation, and now we're going to focus on the future, which is a staying future. Right. That makes me very happy. Along those lines, I thought this this was really interesting to note. In April, the National Employment Report from ADP showed 296,000 new private sector jobs in April, driven by service sector employees, mm -hmm. employers, sorry. Bureau of Labor Statistics data for the same month showed 253,000 new public and private jobs. So these are all very good signals that jobs are becoming available yep. for people at a certain, you know, typically those people that had been leaving jobs are now coming back. Mm -hmm. All right, and here's some more um, signals that, f statistics that can help us really identify what's going on out there to give you more context is the employment participation rate fell less to less than 80% in April of 2020, so at the height of the pandemic, and just crossed back over to even in February of this year. Right. So it's taken a good two years. years. Oh, is that three years? Yeah, yeah. you're right. Three years. Jeez, yeah. gosh. Three years. That's is a it? long time. Yeah, it has. And so, and then also employment participation edged up again to 83.3% this April, the highest rate in 25 years years. Bravo, and, bravo. Yeah. Again, employment participation. So that's, that's the key there. In addition, we are seeing people in their retirement ages coming back into the workforce. We're not quite, we're not quite where we were prior to the pandemic, but we're edging back up in terms of people who decided to take either a retirement or an early retirement during that time. And the same is true for people entering the labor force under the age of 25. So more people are entering the labor force than in, in recent years. Yep. Something I think that is important to remember is that in 2022, people were switching jobs for more money. Mm -hmm. We talked about that before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To the tune of 16.4% of the total labor force. Since then, pay gains are slowing down. And as of April 2023, pay gains for workers who switched jobs was at 13.2%, the lowest pace of growth since November 2021. Yeah. So people are looking for jobs, but they're not necessarily leaving you. Mm -hmm. Because they want to go make money somewhere else. Yeah. More money somewhere else. Right. So then what is it? <laughs> so yeah. what is this telling us to know? Yeah. Well, well, I mean, again, these are, these are, you know, blanket statistics. So I think depending on where you are in the country, there could be some micro sure. things happening. I know the job market in Dallas is, is different than say the job market in other places. We've right. got a lot of interesting things going on here. Um, but what I would say is that I think that where, I think we go through cycles of where pay becomes, and it also depends on where someone is in the season of their life, sure. where a salary or a total compensation can be the driver for someone's decision to leave a company. And again, I think that that comes in cycles. It just depends on what's going on. But what, what the numbers are telling us is that less people are leaving because of that reason. Correct. Now, that could be an external factor of fear of what's happening in the inflationary market that we're right. dealing with. Absolutely. Or what I hope it is, is that companies are taking better care of their people. And so for, you know, a slight increase in pay, it's not worth leaving a healthy culture that takes care of you exactly. in a number of ways. And so the work is rewarding, you know, and the company's invested in your growth and potential. So I think that knowing these, these statistics kind of help us continue for those of us who are making the investment in people, it's more validation for us to keep, keep on that track. And for those who may be struggling with some attrition, maybe why now, is that? why is that? And now's the time, because if it's not, if we don't have a by and large oper uh, macro force that says, okay, people are just leaving jobs for more money then it may, if they're leaving, it may be something else, else. internally to take a look at. So. Right. And so relative to the big stay and along the lines of that question of why, mm -hmm. I love this quote from Miriam Canofton. She's chief people and experience officer at Simpler, which mm -hmm. is a place where we pull a lot of statistics. And she says, reinventing the employee experience should be a perpetual state of motion for organization. Mm -hmm. She goes on to say, in good times and bad, we need to work on delivering great employee experiences, supporting people in doing their 
their best work and being productive and elevating their engagement so they not only give their best, but they want to stick around even when the new opportunities come knocking. So it's not that people aren't hiring. Right. Or it's not that people aren't looking or available, Mm -hmm. but it's do they want to leave, Mm -hmm. right? So when it comes to the employee experience, in a recent Deloitte survey, 85% of executives rated engagement as an important and that's at 38% or very important at 48% priority for their companies. Yeah. So, I mean, what this is saying, if we want to keep the big stay a thing, like if we want to make the big stay a reality, then we need to increase retention in our organizations. We'll have to try initiatives that foster engagement, belonging, and loyalty. Right. I mean, you don't just ask for it. You don't just, you can't demand loyalty. Right. You have to earn it. No different than trust and all the other things that come along with, with a person's experience at a company. So I think again, oftentimes, especially in markets like this, we can be forced to look at external metrics or performance Mm -hmm. metrics, because I know a lot of companies have experienced, you know, some, some tougher times of late due, due to what's going on in the, in, in the economy. That being said, I think companies that, again, put people first. And it's easy to say that. I think a lot of companies think that they put people first. And we did. We did for so long That's right. because we cared about our people. Yeah. But that didn't mean that we were actually operationalizing the commitment to people and starting to measure that. And like I have said before, in any given week or month, you know, employees here at, at DMA, we have some upwards of sometimes 20% of their time that they, you know, track in our system is, is strictly on development. Yes. And, and, and them becoming better versions of themselves and certainly better marketers as we are a marketing agency. So that's right. We know this to be true. We do. And, and Miriam also cites, this is a good segue Mm -hmm. rewards as a, a reward specifically as another way of strengthening the employee experience, which one of them would be self like development, professional development. She says, we know total rewards factors are more prevalent as retention drivers. Whereas for engagement, it's more about relational factors, Mm -hmm. but both are influenced by your experience at work. And now is the time to double down on your employee experience. So I thought we could talk a little bit about the difference between retention drivers and relational factors for leaders. Okay. So retention drivers that can strengthen the experience for your team members include things like pay and bonus, Mm -hmm. obviously giving people the opportunity to earn more money, uh, benefits, increasing benefits. And that can be any number of things. And, you know, there's act, you know, there's what I would consider the foundational benefits, but then there's also these, um, Fringe, as they call them. Fringe, yeah, I guess. I just, I don't like that word. I, right. There's a better word for it, and I can't remember what they're called. But I would almost want to call discretionary, them, maybe. It, it, even that marginalizes it. Yeah, that's right. You yeah. see what I'm saying? I like, see. I want it to be. I want these benefits to be things that, and we have them. I just can't re- can't think of the name of the category. But um, I think increasing benefits, the foundationals being insurance. IRA yes. or 401k contributions, yes. you know, things like paying for cell phone bills. I mean, it just depends on the nature of the company. And those are normal benefits here, but those aren't necessarily not normal no. benefits. Everywhere. No, no, you know, we, and it, well, when we made the commitment to work on our culture and obviously that started with, with, with me as a leader and then ultimately everyone at this company mm-hmm. moving themselves forward in terms of what they know and what they need to work on. It, we we made a decision to increase and create a total compensation package that includes obviously salaries. It includes the benefits, these foundational benefits, but then all of these other benefits that really, in our minds, help support someone in their journey. Yes. So we're an agency. A lot of the times we ha- we have to have the ability to timely respond to people who are not in our time zone, and we're continuously having to monitor our clients' cons- you know consumer facing assets. Yes. So one of the benefits for us is you know that we like to give our employees is to pay for their cell phone bills. I mean we don't abuse it, we don't over, but it's it's the way to, uh, a way to communicate, and an critical way for us to communicate. So we looked at 
all the things that we can do. I'm proud to say that we're in our second year of DMA paying for 100% of health care. You know, we worked really hard to get to that to get to that point for those that have opted in on that. So these are just some of the examples of each and every year we sit down and we think, okay, what now is mm-hmm. going to support the workforce today? And we have to look at, we almost have to take an audit of what do people value the most right now? And we have a lot of new families forming. We have a lot of folks that, that, that are, you know, wanting to experience more travel. Yeah. And so we, we support that by having very aggressive work remote and a PTO uh, benefits. So those are just some of the things that I think from a retention drivers, yes. uh, obviously we talked about flexible work and I think that is obviously remote or a hybrid, you know, completely remote or a hybrid model. But I think the key is flexibility. Yes. You know, we believe for us and our company, and I think each you know, you have to determine this for, for your own, but for us being together is important, mm-hmm. but we don't have to be together all the time mm-hmm. and encouraging our team members when they are remote to work on things, to really create white space, to really, you know, schedule their week to where when they are remote, maybe they're in a bit of more of a creative, one of the individual creative modes versus the group creative modes. And so moving on relational factors, as opposed to retention drivers, um, these relational factors that drive engagement are fortitude of management. How are your leaders leading the company? And are they leading in a way that encourages people to stay or leave? Right. So I think that that's critical. Super important. Yep. And that's something that we've worked extensively hard on here and continue to do so. As I mentioned before, relational factors are, are key to a culture. Mm-hmm. And while culture can be, you know, a buzzword of sorts to re, you know, to reiterate what I had mentioned earlier, a culture is a collection of behaviors, And if a company wants to foster a healthier culture, then they not only have to understand and really look deeply to see what are the healthy behaviors and what are the not so healthy behaviors, but then also what can we do to actually live up to the promises that we make? And, you know, if we say we're employee forward, well, how does one know that? Right. Uh, Outside of pay, right? Right. And I think a lot of companies are like, well, I pay well, and that's kind of where it stops. And in today's workforce, with all the exposure we have to understanding that so much more goes into a happy, a happy place to work, mm-hmm. we have to pay attention more to those things. Mm-hmm. And I think there's some companies and some industries that really struggle with that notion. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Seth Godin talks about it a lot. It's like us recovering from the industrial revolution that really shaped a lot of corporations and businesses in this, in this country, as you know, if you think about from the thirties all the way up until today, but that shift has really in the last 10 years started to shift to where we're going to not treat people like a cog to use his word. And we're going to treat them as humans. And so I think that that is all wrapped into a culture. Yes. Like how do we want to behave around here. What does that, what does success look like? And so I think that's, and then also along those lines is creating a sense of belonging. So how are you engaging employees to generate a sense of belonging, whether it's via helpful feedback sessions, spending time together, asking great questions and using input you garner from the team to make a difference to, that matters to your team. That's right. You know, we've, again, I'll mention it again, but we used a tool for almost two years to, with anonymous surveys to where people could comment on certain things to help shape further shape our culture from healthy to even healthier. And that helped shape some of our benefits. You know, I was really able to, and they felt safe with that way that they could say, I, I wish this could be this way. And I was able to respond. Yes. But understand this is why it is the way that it is. But let's look into that. And we made some significant changes to our our benefits based on that feedback. So I think that makes people feel as though they belong when their voice is being heard. Right. And, you know, in my mind, I kind of I, I struggle with that anonymous survey for a while because of the size of our company. Mm-hmm. And in my heart, I felt like, well, I'm approachable. Why don't why don't you just approach me with these things? But we we didn't rely on that 
I, I didn't just rely on that, that instinct. And I'm glad we didn't because yes. we learned so much. And I believe that it created a whole nother level of trust for our organization. Oh yeah. Because people felt like, and I think all the people of the company at the time, you know, which is pretty much the exact Everyone team we here. hear. Yeah. Except with the exception of maybe one person who moved, mm -hmm. um, is that it, we were already strong, mm -hmm. but it made us stronger. Oh, absolutely. So again, just to reiterate the point in case I've lost you all is I think we cannot emphasize the importance of listening to your people. So find ways, multiple ways to where people can speak up about, about how they're feeling about the company or, or, or whether it's a specific benefit or just in general, the morale of the company or yeah, it's almost like the retention drivers are decisions. Mm -hmm. Like we're going to increase this. I'm going to increase your pay. I'm going to pay for this health care. I mean, kind of, I don't want to say black and white, but like decisive, you know, very yeah. decisive. Yeah, that's true. Whereas relational factors that you just talked about are much more emotional. They're a lot more difficult. Oh, a lot. They're gut wrenching in mm -hmm. terms of who are we mm -hmm. and how are we going to behave around here, which sounds like it could be an easy fix, but it's not. No. At least not for us. No, and I and I hope that you know our listeners out there who may be, you know, struggling or figuring out okay, because I think it's easy to say the retention drivers are like you said they're kind of obvious. Yeah, just that's make how these you decisions. The, the, yeah. and these are things that you can do to stay competitive. Let's just keep it that way. Right. Well, I think it's the companies that invest also in the rela relational factors yes. of how are people leading and communicating in your company? You know, how healthy is your culture and are you creating a sense of belonging for this group of people that, that work here? And I know for larger corporations, it's probably hard. It, it's probably hard, but mm -hmm. th th there's again, within there's cultures within large corporations, yes. maybe not always. And you know, if you think about big companies, let's just take Southwest Airlines, they clearly oh. worked on their culture. But even in that organization where there was certainly a culture standard, they also had to, there must be micro cultures that exist there too. Yeah, like almost know. departmental. Departmental, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's just an interesting to, way to think about it. So uh, for those of you who, again, are are in this spot. I think relational factors are where the future competitive yes. advantage lies. Right. I mean the now and the future. Right. Yeah. And there are ways that you can start to integrate relational factors. And I, you know, I'm just going to scratch the surface with what I'm about to say, but little things, even the smallest things like sharing positive feedback mm -hmm. makes me feel like I belong, mm -hmm. you know, like I'm speaking hypothetically, but saying something as simple as good job or giving words of affirmation to people, that's a place to start. If you're a leader, whether mm -hmm. you're in a small company or a large or organization and you're talking about microcultures, departmental mm -hmm. cultures, do that, mm -hmm. do that. Would you rather be the person that gives accolades when they're due or would you rather not be mm -hmm. right? So that's just one way. Improving communication is just a great way to improve relations at work. So regularly scheduled meetings. I mm -hmm. remember a day when we didn't have our operations meeting, mm -hmm. we've fixed that. And then people started to relate more to one another relative to what you're doing versus what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And I can jump in and help you if you need help. Mm -hmm. So those are just easy things that as leaders we can do. Offering career development opportunities for teams is also a way for organizations to improve their relations with employees. This can be something as simple as creating a development plan. There was a day mm -hmm. we didn't have those to something more involved, like a tuition and reimbursement for school. You know, mm -hmm. those are things that help people feel, let people feel like, oh, wow, they're really investing in me. Mm -hmm. And then generally speaking, you want people to be happier at work. And a great way to do this is to make sure the people you're hiring are doing the right work mm -hmm. and that are in the right seat for them. Yeah. Having meaningful work to do helps people feel accomplished while contributing to the overall goals of the organization, which in turn creates happiness. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's a, it's, it's a simple cycle Yes, when you think about That's it, but so hard to execute. Yeah, it is, <laughs> it is not necessarily the easiest of things when you're dealing with the human condition. I mean, if we got to think about it, we're, we're humans here. And if we choose to lead with that notion, you know, it, it takes time. It mm -hmm. takes, you know, it takes flexibility, it quite does. frankly, you know, and, and you'll try some things that don't work for your organization. You know, we have, we have a whole stack of 
pardon me, but shit that just didn't work yes. for us. But we read about it and we thought it sounded good. And then I would come in here and try to force it onto our, our company. And so a lot of what we've worked through, I think it has to do with our size. I think it has to do with a number of things, but is to customize your, you know, things that you want to bring into your organization. And I think we can sometimes just read something in a business book as leaders and then try to come in. And I mean, again, I've, I've been guilty of it many a time. Sometimes it's worked. I shouldn't say it's always guilty. Sometimes it's worked like a charm. And then sometimes it's been, that's just not right for our organization. I think we talk about that in the episode where we kill, we were like the death of, what was it called? The death of the performance review? Mm -hmm, the death of the performance review. <laughs> I don't know if that's what it was called, but it was, let's kill them. Yeah. It was something like that because we tried that for yeah. two years. And oh, yeah. And then we decided I couldn't survive that. No, we couldn't. And then we what <laughs> we ended so up doing big. is creating our own yes. version. Version mm -hmm. and, and it's it's more human versus mm -hmm. just performance. It's uh -huh. about that individual and how they're showing up and their contributions and yes what they're doing well, but more so focused on what what they need to still learn mm -hmm. and what they could be doing better at this stage, mm -hmm. you know, whatever stage they are at in their journey. So looking back, you know, I was just thinking, you know, there are people that do this for a living. Like mm -hmm. there are people that are third party businesses that this is all they do is they come in and they help a leader assess a culture mm -hmm. and develop, you know, how we're going to operationalize these things. We didn't do that. You did have consultants along the way. Mm -hmm. The consultant that told you that you had a 26% approval rating is also the same consultant that gave us mm -hmm. a 25 page employee review right. for us to give to everybody. You're right. And not all of it worked it, out. No, but, but it helped. It helped. Every yeah. little thing that we did along mm -hmm. the way pushed us forward a little bit. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. And so I'm just suggesting here, if, if you're a leader and you're listening to this and you're in a small business or medium sized business, maybe consider a consultant to help mm -hmm. you get this kind of stuff off the ground. Mm -hmm. Agree. Maybe to know would help you with that. <laughs> You can certainly give me a call. We'll talk through it. So relative to this, to now on the big state, mm -hmm. what do you know for sure? I think what we know for sure is that it looks as though the labor tides are turning. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a great signal for us. And that, again, I think it's it depends on sector. It depends on industry. I know there's exceptions. But overall, the numbers that we're seeing are that, there, that there's more trust in organizations. And I don't know if organizations have, we were forced to make a huge change because of the pandemic. Maybe, you know, for some of us, we had already started that journey. I yep. think in some cases, the pandemic forced that along. I think, uh, certainly what's going on in, in, in the, you know, the economy is a driver as well. Um, and, and then I think what I know for sure is that we must start to look within our own processes and practices to determine if we're putting our people in a position to want to stay. Right. And I think that's critical. And I think it's just a simple exercise of a understanding why people might be leaving. Right. So go through that process of you know, exit interviews or conversations, whatever it may be. They don't have to be formal exit interviews. A lot of times people tell you all you need to know before that point. And I think it's also really pulling and listening to your people about what they enjoy about your organization and lean into that. Because if they've been there for a while, you know, there's, there's, there's something there. They have opinions. They ha yeah. And, you know, give them the opportunity to mm -hmm. share those. I think also is once we earn their trust to stay, let's keep, keep them by employing both retention drivers and relational factors that encourage them to remain loyal to our businesses. Mm -hmm. And I think it, again, we're strong believers in the both the retention drivers and the relational factors. So. I don't think we knew they were quite no. that formal and no, that's what they know. were called. Yeah. And you might not either listeners, or maybe you do, but either way, it's good to kind of segment those mm -hmm. so that as you're thinking about the benefits during this time and, and really building a case mm -hmm. for your business, then thinking about those two things helps you sort of organize. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Let's transition to music moment because I'm excited. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Right. Let's talk about Brandy Clark because Ugh. she's hot. Okay. Do hot we have on a, the scene. Yes, she is. Do we have an hour just I know, for her? Just for Brandy. Yes. Not Brandy Carlisle. No. Who we love and adore. Right. And want to be friends with. <laughs> we do for the 1800th time. <laughs> We're just going to say it until someone calls us and I'm like, God, would you like to meet her? Which I don't know that I could do it, but. I could. 
So Brandy Clark knows her very well. Yes. Brandy Carlisle and Brandy, well, Brandy Clark's new album, which yes. is self titled, Brandy Clark, was produced by Brandy Carlisle. <laughs> and so they have a history together, and the Brandys had committed to each other years ago that they would eventually want to do an album together. And so this is by far Brandy Clark's most prolific album because so she like a lot of people we celebrate on in our music moments on our podcast she's been around for a long time mm -hmm. writing incredible music and some of the songs that you might know include casey musgraves follow your arrow melanda miranda lambert's mama's broken heart some of you might have heard me karaoke that about a <laughs> hundred times and she also wrote a beautiful noise the grammy song of the year nominated duet performed by brandy carlisle and alicia key so if you know that song a beautiful noise and so so she, when you listen to this album, you know, Brandy Carlisle suggested to Brandy Clark, whatever songs we put on this particular album, and, and I don't know that she wrote all of them, but it, I mean, she wrote, I would guess most of A them, lot, yeah. yeah, is that, that someone would believe that she felt every single lyric i heard them in an interview and i loved that because when you listen to this album you believe everything she says and so her story is is a beautiful story so i highly recommend you you look up brandy clark and, and learn more about her um, but she's incredible and the other part of brandy clark that i didn't see coming was obviously y'all know i'm in new york i'm attending a lot of broadway shows well there's a show called shucked a brand new and so I saw that Shucked opened up and Mackie Payton and I went to go see this show. And it turns out that Brandy Clark with Shane McAnally wrote the score, or I don't know if you call it a score, but wrote the music yes. for the uh, musical Shucked. And they just had a big time at the Tonys too. So they were rewarded for that. So she literally is on fire right now. On fire. And for someone who was behind the scenes is now in front of the scenes. It's just interesting to watch her like Chris Stapleton, like Caitlin Smith, yes. really come forward as songwriters and, and now being able to share their music is just incredible. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm enthralled with her and I can't wait to see her live. I'm going to ask Jesse, I don't know how to do this myself, just for full transparency, but on a story, I want us to post the Northwest song. Oh, okay. Yeah, the Northwest song is incredible. Y'all can get a little taste. And what's cool about that is both Brandy Clark and Brandy Carlisle are from Live the North. There. Yeah, they're they're from the Northwest. So, and it's just a beautiful like the whole album. I mean, it had, there's some heartbreak in there. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of love. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of reminiscent. I love the song that you love where she talks about grandmother. her grandmother. Uh, she, it's just it's it's beautiful and it's I like how each song and of course her and Brandy sing. Uh, Dear Insecurity, mm -hmm. which should be on every, it should be mandatory listening for all of us because we all deal with insecurities. And I think the way that they've, they've made this song about something we all deal with, all of us deal with, yeah. is just, it's so beautiful and, the, and they sound amazing. And then of course, our favorite to Lucia sings on the album too. Yes. So that a duo that it's on a lot of Brandy's work, Grace Potter's work, Lucia's is just, they're, they make an album. Their harmonies are incredible. Incredible. So, yeah. It's yeah. anyway, go check her out. Yeah, check her out. We'll put the out. links in our show notes. And we're gonna tag her and maybe she'll call us and maybe want to meet us. <laughs> maybe. Y'all, it's wishful thinking. thinking. <laughs> we gotta put it, we gotta manifest these <laughs> we things. Do. Yes. We have to say it out loud so it That's can potentially right. happen. Oh, I was also gonna say I was in doing research about Randy Clark. I saw where she has been called one of the greatest, if not the greatest currently, short form story song writer wow yeah i love that but her because her songs are so story centric yes, they are story yes and then if you go see shucked i mean it, it that's that's what it is yeah it's so good so go so get good. you some brandy clark yes. brandy clark yes yes because you'll be also supporting brandy carlo yeah <laughs> secretively you will yeah. yes exactly <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you so much for today. Thank you for joining us again. I uh, wanted to mention we have, since we had so many stats today, the, the all the links to all the research that we found is mm -hmm. all going to be in our sources and links in the show yes. notes. Right. We would love for you to tell a friend if this episode was helpful to you, it probably would be helpful to someone else that you know. And until next week, we send you into the week with grateful hearts. Goodbye, everyone. 
As always, you can connect with us on Instagram and Facebook at Self Smarter Podcast. You can also leave a rating or review if you enjoyed what you heard today. Not only does this mean so much to us, but it also helps other leaders and future leaders find our community. Thank you for taking time out of your day to join us in becoming Self Smarter. This podcast is produced by Snacks Media and music is from a free platform. Well, that is until Brandy Carlisle reaches out to us to write the original score for our podcast. Friends, have a great rest of your day.